What is going on, YouTube? PPS here, YouTube play of the day. Two plays, very good spots. I feel good about these spots. Good odds on these as well. Um, yeah, obviously I have one play to recap from yesterday. Not what I like to do. We have a loser there again. That is now we are one and three over our last four picks. So obviously not where we want to be. Um, Cornell team throw over 83 and a half. I actually really like that spot, man. I mean, the second half looked like the first half should. They ended up with 77. They scored 49 second half points. Uh, if you had told me they scored 49 second half points, I thought we would have absolutely, absolutely smashed that number. But uh, just really, really slow. Could not get anything going in that first half. Only 28 points. So it happens, but really, really not uh, not ideal with how good that offense is. Um they kind of ran them out of the gym, too, so they didn't get the free throws at the end. Um, Penn ended up losing by 17. Uh, thought it would be a little bit closer. Thought we get free throws. Thought we get all that other stuff. But, hey, it's how it works. Um, thought Penn would be able to keep it, you know, within like six to eight where the spread was. Uh, but shout out Cornell, man. They're still good, and I'm still going to continue to back these guys. So two spots, two teams I do like. Um and let's get right into it. So both of these are going to be on different sites. So let's uh, let's go DraftKings here first. I'm going to be going with the over 157 in Samford. And I am also going to pull this up for you guys um, right away because it's a 1.5. Don't want it to move on me. Over 85 and a half total. Obviously, you know I'm going to Toledo today. Uh, 1.5 unit play on that. I will talk about it in a second. But we're going to start with Western Carolina. Western Carolina over 157 minus 108. I backed Samford on Saturday, probably my best bet of the year. Um, two unit play on Samford team total. They scored 135 points. So numbers are going to be a little bit skewed there, obviously. But what I do like from the Samford team is, dude, they're going to run and absolutely gun on you. Uh, Samford officially has moved up to the number three pace team in the country, um, only behind Kennesaw State and Western Kentucky, which is pretty wild. Uh, Western, Western Carolina um, so far this year. Not too bad. 15-2 and two in the Southern Conference. Sanford is 15-2 and two as well. So this is a big game. Um, I do expect defense here. But this is going to be by far the fastest game Western Carolina has played and by a, a significant margin. Um, we look at Wofford outside the top 100 in pace, uh, playing at the 136. Citadel, um, 151 they're outside of the top 100 in pace and then you go to their um, non-con and it's not great right tennessee tech um they beat mcneese which has aged extremely extremely well um they beat notre dame who's absolutely garbage um beat unc Asheville, but this is the one i want to talk about high point is one of the few teams that ran pace on them and it was 97 71 um and i don't think you can slow down the samford style right i don't think the Stanford style slows down really for anybody. Um, I would be very surprised to see it slow down um, with these guys here today. You look at Sanford, 85-77 last year um, in their first matchup. And then when they were at Sanford, it was 74-65. So two very different games. Um, but what I do like is the one that they were at home, the game did go over. Um, and, and I think that's a, a good thing to look at here because they are significantly better at home, Western Carolina. Um, and we, we saw last year as well, both of these teams foul a ton, right? A ton. Uh, both of them in the bottom 100 in personal fouls, personal foul percentage per game. One of them, I think uh, Western Carolina was like 25%, which is not good. Um, we look at this team here, and I'm looking at these numbers from last year's game, and 24 free throws for Samford last year, 21 for 24, 19 for 28 was Western Carolina. That's going to have to improve a little bit. I expect the free three-point percentage to improve a little bit um, where they're only shooting 29% uh, from three. Um, a lot of open ball turnovers, which I do like. I do like the open floor turnovers. But 42 total fouls in that game last year, I think it's very, very important to uh, – how we're going to win this game, how we're going to win this bet. Sanford, I think, is going to have a absolute advantage down low. Uh, their leading scorer, Akor, Akor, 6.15 and a half per game in only 19.9 minutes, shooting 50% from three, um, but really, really good in the paint, 62% from the field. Um, obviously, you look down the rest of this lineup, 
uh, they're going to be having some shooters out there as well. Uh, both these teams, top 100 in three-point percentage. Sanford, very, very good. I, I don't want to go into Sanford too much where they're top – because they're like top 10 in three-point percentage. But a lot of that is based off of last game where they shot 52 or 48% from three and blew out that team. Blew out VMI because they're so bad. But they blew them out, had a huge number, and that skewed a lot of their data. So I'm not going to go crazy on that because their home road data is pretty wild actually right now just because of that game, right, because they were really that bad. Um, looking at these two teams, Sanford on the year, um, 218 in terms of three-point shooting allowed, 34%. You go over to West uh, Western Carolina, and they are kind of around where they're at too, 34%, um, 200th in the country in that spot. So. Both teams don't defend the three ball particularly well. I don't think Western Carolina has had enough pace in these games to to warrant them playing fast. Um, and and you really can't slow down the Sanford team. If you, I mean, even if you just look at their schedule here, they, there's no team really truly slowing them down. Right, it's just making shots. Right, 180 points on the Citadel, 89 on Chattanooga, right. Uh, 79 on one of the slowest teams in the country in Valparaiso. A team that was willing to run with them was Belmont, 93-99. This defense is not that good. Uh, VMI scored 96 on these guys, right? Their defense is not good. They haven't played anybody. You look at If you want to look at their numbers here, the opponent's schedule of offenses have been 352 in the country, and they're still middle of the country in terms of um, just uh, adjusted offense or adjusted defense. 146, the adjusted offense strength of schedule is 352 out of 362. So Western Carolina, who's got some dudes, who's got some dudes, should be able to put up some big numbers, which is the reason why I'm not playing um, the – I'm not playing um, Sanford straight or any of that. So Western Carolina, I'm telling you, Woolbright will drop 25 tonight if they keep this pace. Woolbright – averaging 20 per game in a matchup with this defense in this pace. Sign me up for 25 for him. Uh, if you get props for him, uh, if you can go on prize picks or whatever, play that because this dude's going to cook. I showed you already. One and a half unit play. I'm going to Lido team total um, over 85 and a half on FanDuel right now. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how Buffalo stops these guys, guys. I really, I really don't. Uh, you look at Buffalo – they can't really stop the three ball, right? 207th in the country, allowing uh, 34% from three. I, I You got to be better than that, man. You, you got to be very good at stopping the three-point shot. And if you're not, uh, I'm, I'm really worried about how you're going to slow this team down, guys. I really don't, I don't know how we're going to start to see this Buffalo team slow down these guys. This is going to be a track meet, the way Toledo wants to play it. Um, looking at the numbers here for Buffalo, not particularly good. They're 326 in terms of adjusted defense, 320 adjusted offense, middle of the, of the pack and pace. So I think that we're going to see Toledo be able to pretty much do whatever they want efficiency-wise. Um, Toledo's not as fast as they have been in the past um, outside of the top 100. But, again, 60th in the country in adjusted offense. This team has had five different guys be their leading scorer this year. Um, they got Raheem Moss, who's obviously a stud. Um, Cochran, who's a stud. Maddox is a stud, right? You're going to have a lot of dudes who can shoot. <laughs> a lot of guys here who shoot the free throw ball well. Um, and those are going to be important in these games where we're trying to get every point we can out of this. We got to get every single point when we're trying to get to a mid 80s. They're averaging 79 on the season. This is one of the worst defenses they've played. But I really want to back them at home, guys. I really want to back them at home. Uh, this team is elite shooting at home. Obviously, uh, if you want to go to first half points per game, is usually what I like to look at because these guys have been an absolute wagon for me in the first half. But what I I need to learn to, to use in-season data a little bit more because Toledo last year was one of the best first half teams in the country. They were awesome. And I still like them this year um, quite a bit, just depending on the matchup. But Toledo this year, and I think this is important, Toledo right now ranks um, – 28th in the country in, first, or in second half scoring. They're averaging 42 and a half per game at home and on the road. So I think that's really important for a team here that uh, I think is going to be up a little bit. I think they're going to keep the pedal down. I think they're going to try and still continue to run that offense. Um, they need to continue to build that uh, resume, getting into 
if I mean, obviously you're going to need to win a lot of games. And if they find if they do lose in the Mac tournament, you want to have that at large opportunity. So um, I really like Toledo at 85 and a half. I think this is a very nice number. I think people are expecting a huge blowout, which I expect as well. But we've seen these guys run up the score on Detroit Mercy. They won by 34. They scored 94 on them, right? We've seen a couple of these scores get pretty high up there. Um, and, and I expect this one to, to get up there as well. One by 14 at Kent State. That is such a big win. I understand people may be thinking that they could be in a look ahead spot, but at Central Michigan, not really. This is a home game for these guys. Central Michigan is not good. So I don't feel like there's a huge look ahead. And I think they're going to come out absolutely swinging here. Um, against Buffalo, putting up a big number. I, I mean, maybe even 100, honestly. Maybe even 100 here. I think uh, Toledo is significantly better and has – and I love this offense. So, Toledo, team total over 85.5, 1.5 units at minus 108. In Western Carolina, over 157, minus 108 as well. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I know it's a little long. Hit that like button. We need to bounce back today with two winners for you guys. So, best of luck, and we'll see you guys.